All right, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today, we're going to be building a stand for this tubing bender. And it's an ideal MIG job, but we're going to stick weld it instead. There's a good reason why. I'll show you later on, and you'll see. But we're going to be using an Everlast Power Pro 256 multi-process combo unit. It does TIG, stick, and plasma cut. And uh, all we need to do, I, I normally keep this thing set up for TIG welding, but all we need to do to swap it over to stick is change the TIG to the stick. Uh, button and uh, set the arc force and amperage. The arc force uh, will give you a more digging arc or a softer arc. It gives you a more digging arc by bumping up the voltage when you get when you really bury the arc. It keeps you from sticking the arc and uh, you know can burn through rust and everything too. So it's a useful thing to learn. All right. Anyway, also need to swap the uh, electrode ground. Make sure I got an electrode positive for stick welding. Just takes a second. You can see it's pretty easy here because I'm actually holding a camera with one hand and doing it with the other and so I'm ready to go. I settled in about 138 amps. So I got some 1 8 70 18 rods and uh, we're going to weld the both flanges, the top flange and the bottom flange on this uh, uh, tubing bender stand. So we're, we're using three and a half inch square tubing about 3 16 inch wall and we're going to weld it to uh, the plate that, that came with this thing, the mounting plate which is uh, about nine inches square. So a little quick quick tip on uh, figuring out how to center that thing up. We take the nine inches, subtract the three and a half inches from it. We got five and a half inches, right? That's the leftover space we got after the tubing. So we divide that in half. We got two and three quarter inches. So that's the overhang on each side all the way around, uh, sticking out from the tubing. So what I could do is just put some marks two and three quarter inches all the way around with a straight edge and mark it off. But the easier an easier way is using a combination square slide that blade out and I actually uh, shorted it a little bit a little bit less than two and three quarter because I don't want to hide the line when I put the square tubing on there I want to be able to see the whole line so uh, if I if I put it exactly it might hide the line and it's kind of hard to see exactly where you are so I uh, came out another 16th or, or 16th of an inch or so or eighth of an inch and uh, made the mark and then when I laid the tubing up there on this I know it's going to be centered up and I also, I can, if, if, the, if there's a little space between the line and the tubing, it's easy to eyeball and get it even all the way around. So just a down and dirty tip. All right, that's about ready to, uh, about ready to nail down there once we get it tapped around a little bit. No problem. Ready to tack, but not yet. Now, it matters where you put the tack. It's a big deal where you put the first tack. And uh, if the tubing's not cut perfectly square, it's a real big deal. Or you, won't, you, you put it in the wrong place, you will not be able to ever get it square because it'll be locked down and you won't be able to pull it around. So what I want to do is find you know, how, how out of square this thing is. I see it's not very square. But I want to look around and I want to find two sides, two consecutive sides where I'm seeing light at the top of the, uh, of the square. And that corner in between them is where I want to put the first tack. And if I do that, I'll be able to pull it back either way and get it square. So I'm going to put that first tack there. And then from there, you have to get this thing square one, one direction at a time. So going to my right, I'm going to uh, bump this thing around. And know, I know that when I put the tack on the corner near where my finger is right here, that it's going to pull in that direction. Shrinkage stress of that weld metal is going to pull it down. It's going to pull it a lot more than you think sometimes. So I'm going to bump this thing around to where I get a roughly uh, about a sixteenth of an inch out of square to the top of that 12 inch blade on the, uh, on the, on the square. So looking at the top of this square, I want to see about a one sixteenth of light. Now you can eyeball this, you, you know, you know, everybody knows what a sixteenth is, but um, I want at least a sixteenth. I know it's at least going to pull that far. I'm going to try to get it as close to that, just going from experience. It depends. It, it all it all matters too on how big a tack you put on and everything. But I'll keep the camera right here as I tack this thing. You saw I had a sixteenth gap, and as that weld metal cools and solidifies, you can see that that gap is just going away and going away and then gone. So now that's just about right. That is dead nut square. All right, now I've got to go in the other direction. I've got it. I've got it straight in one direction now, and I've got a. It's a little harder to pull around now with two tacks on it. 
I'm going to put the, tack, the square on over here and mess around with it until I get at least a sixteenth. This time I'm going to put two tacks on it, so I know it's going to pull more than a sixteenth. So I want to put a, a good heavy sixteenth of, of, uh, out of square, but I'm going to have the light at the bottom this time. It just depends on which side you put the square on. So somewhere between a sixteenth and an eighth, and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, get one tack and then scoot over and get another tack. And that's going to pull it down just about right again. Now, I'm going to weld over all those tracks that I just made. It's probably not the, you know, best best practices to, to uh, drag all those arc, arc scratches and everything. But I am going to weld all over that and reconsume everything. And for what this is, it's not going to hurt a thing. So now we're, uh, we're good and square, dead nuts, both directions, and we're ready to weld. Now, before I settled in at a good amperage, because I haven't done a whole lot of stick welding with the, uh, the Power Pro 256, I was a little hot. Running good, but when it's a little hot like this, and I've got the arc force kind of high because these are some old 7818s have been just out in the open for years, I knew I would uh, have a tendency to stick, so I turned the arc force up a little bit and turned it up a little hotter than I would normally. And uh, still did okay, but you see I got a few BBs on there. Uh, you can hear it popping, and uh, so I know I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Like I said, I settled in at about 138 amps for the rest of it, which is actually a little hotter than you would normally have to run a good 7018 that's been in an oven. About 120 is a good uh, for most for most 7018s, but you know every machine's a little different, and every rod is made a little bit different. And these these aren't the best rods in the world. I think they came from uh, just you know came from MSC or something. They're kind of an off brand, but they're okay. For jobs like this, they're fine. Like I said, I'll show you why we, we chose a stick welder here later on. Now, a TIG finger is not just for TIG welding. It's good for stick welding and good for using a cutting torch and everything else. And this is the way I like to prop sometimes when I just want to get away from the from the sparks and everything. Prop a pinky on the hot metal and then thumb to pinky on the other side. And then it gives me a good steady way. I can relax. I don't have to get all tight and everything. And uh, then as I feed the rod, my my hands just kind of go together and collapse a little bit and it just feeds it in there nice and smooth and I can I can use this technique on 6G pipes and all kinds of other ways and later on I will do a video on showing you uh, how handy this comes in on a small diameter 6G pipe for stick welding but for right now I'm just kind of thought, thought I'd take the opportunity to, to show it it's just one way of propping. Now I could do this with one hand easy enough especially with it hot like it is you can just lay that rod in there and drag it and, and whistle Dixie and not have any problem but Again, I just thought I'd take the opportunity to show you a different way to prop. Turn it down, like I said, to about 138 amps, and it's settled down. No more BBs, nice and smooth. Still, I like to hold a good tight arc. I'm about to wrap the corner here and tie in to the previous bead. And I'm trying to, I'm kind of practicing slinging that, that uh, rod when I'm done, get, making for an easier start later on. I usually just use a file because uh, you don't always want to throw balls of fire everywhere. So. When the base plate's done, it's, uh, you know, stick welding, you got to clean that slag off, things, especially if things are going to be painted, you know, when he wants to leave the slag on. So, uh, couldn't find a chip and hammer, but heat was pretty close. Stuff comes off pretty easy when you can rake a rod over it, over it and it comes off, you know you didn't do too bad a job. So, we'll get this cleaned up. And in a minute here, I'll show you that first bead that was welded at about the 10 or 20 amps hotter than it should have been. And what happens, what to look for when you see this, you'll know you're a little bit too hot. All right, see all those big BBs there? I chipped them off already. Uh, that last shot you saw right there. But when you see those, those big, uh, I hear they come again. All right, see the BBs there like that. That's just the metal kind of ex exploding down in there and, and popping out, and it leaves a little low place on a ripple when it does that. No big deal. It's not really a flaw. It just takes time to take a, a cold chisel and chisel them off. Now, here's why we chose stick welding for the day. The other flange was tacked on by somebody else, and uh, for, the, for what it is, it really wasn't worth cutting loose and grinding all that mess off, and uh, this was actually a favor for somebody anyway. So, you know, it's going to be underneath where you can't see it, but I'm gonna still try to weld over all this. Welding over all this junk with uh, with a MIG would just give me porosity, bubbles, more problems have to grind out. This is where stick welding comes in. You can weld over a lot of mess with stick welding and uh, it turn out okay. So that's why I 
I figured, well, we don't have a MIG welder set up yet. I'd have to hook it all up, bring it over here for this, uh, you know, 30 minute job. I'll just hook up this Power Pro 256, put a 7018 in there, and no problem. So, first, I'm going to fill that little hole. Hard to believe you could blow a hole in 3 16th uh, TIG tacking. Tack with a TIG welder, by the way. And, uh, but the guy wasn't a welder. He was just trying to help me out, trying to speed things up a little bit. So, uh, it's what you run into sometimes, and uh, you deal with it. Again, we're rolling it over, we're kind of backstepping it. Welding a, welding a whole side and then welding to the bead that I previously made so there's no tie-ins in the middle. The only tie-in is going to be where I tie back into the start of the previous bead. And in a minute we should have a close-up of this. There we go. Again, People always ask how to set a, a stick machine. To me, the right amperage is hot enough that I can hold a, a tight arc uh, without it sticking. Just about at that point. If it starts sticking when I'm buried, when I'm holding a really tight arc like this, not exactly buried, but just a tight arc. If it sticks, I turn it up a little bit, just enough where it doesn't. And that's usually about the right heat for flat. Now, vertical uphill, you're gonna have to go down a little bit on the amperage, but uh, for flat beads like this, you can, you can. There's a lot of fudge factor. You can be a little too hot and still make things happen. There it is, all the holes and nasty tacks all filled in, so kind of made a silk purse out of a sow's ear here. Definitely good enough for what it is. A bender stand, now we got a nice plum bender stand. We know we got the base plate straight and uh, all welded up good with the stick rod. Now my friend who won this bender at a hot rod show has a place to put it and we can actually start using it now. So all in all, I think it was a pretty good day. All right, thanks for watching WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.